Hello there and welcome back to the channel. We are finally at our final episode of our map pre-build before the Eurasia download content pack for Planet Zoo launches in just under 24 hours. So uh, in this episode, we are going to go over a little bit more of the detailing and just some of those final little bits making the map ready. Starting off, we're going to be making a rock wall using some of the new Oceania stone pieces, some aquatic rocks, and then we're just going to pop a load of different coloured rocks in amongst it and build that wall up. Now while I get that on screen in the background, let's just run through a couple of comments that I've had and a couple of questions that have been fired specifically over on Reddit um, about the project here. So uh, yes, this map will be used for a series and if you stick around till the end of the video here in the cinematics, you will see the launch of our new, uh, I guess it, you could call it a mini series, there's going to be about eight episodes, so it's still going to be roughly about two to three months worth of work. but. Uh, yep, we will be doing a zoo uh, based on the animal pack, based on the download pack in this map and that's primarily my main reason for building it. Uh, the idea is, however, right now what we're going to be left with at the end of today's episode is a starting point. So it won't be complete enclosures, it won't be fully formed habitats. I do expect to have to destroy half of this map to bring the zoo parts in, uh, but that's kind of half the fun. It gives us somewhere nice to start with. However, the intention will very much be to reuse a lot of the things that we're making right now. So the cobblestone wall on screen, for example, we're going to use that as much as possible when we can. But the idea will be that the, uh, I guess, the challenge of building a zoo in this map is trying to make it fit within this sort of area. Now, as you can see in the background there, we've made our stone wall. We've repeated it. I did a little bit of randomization so they don't all look the same. And then we're just going to sort of mark out a couple of areas that would otherwise be, I guess, fields or um, land borders. I, d I don't know how you'd refer to them, but in essence, we're going to sort of bring them all across the map, section it up, and then we're going to knock a load of holes in it. We're going to knock it down. We're going to make it a little bit more worn in, bed it into the map a little bit more. And we're doing that, as you can see on screen, by just basically making rubble and gaps and holes all throughout the wall. It stops it looking repeated, it stops it looking all the same and you'll see in our walkthrough at the end there that there's loads of different little things just to catch your eye and I absolutely love putting these sort of things into maps. Stuff that as you're going along you go, oh well there's no reason to make that but hey it's cool. Now it's not just going to be stone walls that we're using right now, we're also going to pop in a couple of other dividers, we've already got the hedges from last episode. And here I'm just going to make a very simple fence and the idea with a lot of what I'm building right now for this map is that we're going for very simple, very low budget. The idea would be that the authority that manages this area uh, doesn't want to spend large amounts of money putting in a load of metal fences and you find that a lot especially here in the UK. Um, a lot of natural areas they don't get probably as upkept as uh, I think you'd find in more like, a, say, a city park or, or anywhere that's got a lot of income coming in. Um, so it tends to be very much just basic wooden fences, a little bit of mesh, normally just stapled to it. Um, and we really don't want to go too overboard with it all. As you can see here, I'm just dotting this around in some of the breakages of the walls. So the idea would be that the wall had fallen down quite a while ago. And then the authorities come along and gone, oh, OK, well, we'll just we'll put a fence in the way. Now we're moving on to deleting our path markers. Once we build the zoo, we will sort of define these paths out a lot more. But for now, we're just getting rid of them. Now, what we've got here, instead of, um, and I actually made this on a bit of a whim, which is kind of why today's episode's a little bit late. Um, I've got quite a few things in here that have been made on a whim. Um, but in essence, this is a piece of broken fence. And I thought rather than running a freshly made fence down the side of all of the paths, what we would do is have this area where it's had an old sort of cheap metal rusty fence put in uh, that has since fallen away, degraded, rusted, and there's just little sections left. So I've made a couple of sections like this. I'm only putting one in the video, but you'll see it in the final uh, walkthrough there. Um, and essentially we're going to use this just along the side of the path and also in some of the, as you can see on screen, in some of the gaps in the wall, again like a quick repair. Um, it's just in there, nice very quick and dirty bridge. This is not even going to be a real bridge. It's just there to hide the path. Again, I'm in two minds. We'll see when we come to it when building the zoo, whether or not this bridge stays or whether we replace it with something a little bit more dramatic. But for now, it's just a little stone bridge made out of the European dry stone walls. And then I've just put a very basic wooden fence just to stop people falling off of it. 
Next up, we're going to build a small, uh, I guess, park ranger hut, I guess you would call it. Um, my idea and from some inspiration pictures I saw was that this would eventually become a little toilet block slash cafe, but with the launch of the new gift shop uh, with tomorrow's download content, uh, or rather tomorrow's free update, then I kind of want to turn this into a little bit of a gift shop, um, just on its own, not necessarily just as part of the zoo. It's a very simple building, it's got some toilets in it, it's got a simple roof, uh, I did a little bit of a, a decorative door, um, it's not meant to be a feature piece and what you will probably see from a lot of my builds is that buildings themselves I tend to struggle with, which is incredibly frustrating to me because my background is as a designer, um, but I really do struggle with, I guess, architecture, uh, not necessarily coming up with a design, but coming up with how to make it inside Planet Zoo. And it's something that in our future series, I really want to work on. Now the landscaping, the decoration of this building and around it is a bit of a weird case because I already know what I want to put here when we start building the zoo. I already know that I'm going to build an entrance up and this whole area is going to change, not completely, but at least uh, certainly more than how it looks now. So I'm loath to sort of put too much time into getting all of this looking amazing. It looks good. I'm not going to say it doesn't look good. It does look good. But I don't want to put in too much time to get it looking perfect because I just know I'm going to tear it apart. So for now, it's just literally a toilet block. That's all that's in there. Um, and then once we get the zoo underway, it will transform into something a little bit more. We're not going to knock it down. I'm not going to delete it, but I am going to transform it into something a lot more useful and it's definitely going to have a use. Now as we finish that up, um, I'm then going to put in a couple of ricey signs and if I remember to, I'll link them in the description below. If not, shout at me in the comments and I will add them to the description below. Um, but these signs are amazing and I was going to build some custom ones but then I sort of looked at it and thought, I'm going to change it as soon as it's a zoo, so <laughs> let's not. And ricey signs, I can't beat that, they're amazing. And then just some final little detailing points, so we're going to pop on some benches and some bins and then just popping a couple of decals pretty much everywhere. I won't bore you with that one, but let's jump on into a walkthrough and see how it now looks. So here we go. As you can see in the background, as we go through there, there are a few things dotted around that I kind of need to get rid of before we do the final cinematic, but this gives you an idea of how it now sort of all works. We've, we're starting off in our more barren area, the more rockier area, and this is gonna be where a lot of our um, new animals that prefer less woodland and more rock and open plains will go. And although you've not seen it on video, I have also been doing a lot of tests as to how all of this looks when it's covered in snow. Because the idea is a lot of the animals coming in the Eurasia pack are very, very much beautiful when pictures in the snow. So we will be using that quite a bit. Now as we come down here, you can see that sort of fake fence over on the left. As I say, it's not there to stop you going through. It's an old fence, it's gone. They're just there as a point of interest. I've put a couple of extra feature trees in, a couple more broken bits of brick. Um, I really, really am happy with how this turned out. Even just as it is, I'd be happy just to use it as a country park. Um, and we already have some animals in. So as a small treat, uh, we do have some deer roaming around. Um, fun fact, these babies are actually outside of the enclosure they should be in. Uh, it was just pure coincidence. They happen to be running across the path here. Uh, but it looked so good, I thought I'd leave it in. <laughs> I did get them back in and solve the area they were climbing out from. Um, I think the biggest challenge is going to be, obviously, keeping this sort of charm that it sort of created whilst building a zoo in there, and also getting it so that the visitors can see all of the animals um, without destroying the landscape too much. Uh, the sloth bear is a particular concern. But I'm really excited to try, so uh, it's uh, it's going to be really fun. And I, I'm really, as I say, really happy with how this map turned out. And hopefully you guys agree. I can't wait to start getting some of those animals into it. Now, as we make the final stretch now back towards the entrance, uh, just a quick, I guess, public service announcement. Um, I just wanted to obviously thank all of you guys for all of the likes, all of the comments. The feedback has been absolutely amazing. Um, I was completely blown away uh, really well by the uh, reaction to the first episode of this series and uh, it's just been going stronger ever since. And as we make our way back to the car park, 
back to get in our cars and leave this wonderful country park, um, I have a little bit of a, a, an ask for you guys. In the comments below, let me know which animal we should bring into our new zoo first. Which animal do you guys want to see as the first entry, outside of the deer of course, into our new wildlife park. Now we're going to finish up today with a couple of cinematics of our first animal, I guess you could call them, our wonderful deer that are roaming around the park. But before we do that, there's one thing left to do and that is we need to give our wildlife park a name. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Antara Wildlife Park and Future Zoo. I can't wait for you guys to join me in getting it built and seeing what we can make with the brand new download content pack. I will see you next time. Goodbye.